Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, today I thought that I would get out the Elk Pack portable antenna kit that I put together a little while back. If you haven't seen that video on this product, I'll link it down in the description uh, below. And it comes in this uh, comes with this nice carrying case, and here's the actual antenna itself. Just to recap, this uh, frame, this winding frame, insulators, um, various hardware, uh, various other bits and bobs, insulators, wire or rope, ground or ground stakes. All these little bits and pieces come together as a kit and then these are 3d printed using pet pet plastic and down inside there you can just see it wrapped under the wire there we go that's a better view of it see that in there uh, the uh, winder has uh, holes and mountings there for you to put your own ballon uh, or transformer one-to-one -one ballon 9 to 1, uh, in this case a 49 to 1, because this is a, an end fed half wave. So the kit's real flexible and lets you build all kinds of nice little portable antennas that you can pack up in this little kit, carrying pouch, and then quickly deploy. And I built a uh, end fed half wave antenna for 40 meters. So this is 65 feet of wire. I have not tuned it yet. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to um, trim the antenna to tune it and then make some contacts on it and we'll see how well it performs the uh, 49 to 1 ballon that's in there uh, that was an additional kit from electro ludicates uh, so he, you can order the uh, the raw kit which just comes with the hardware and then you can order uh, a ballon kit from him then he'll send you the uh, appropriate toroid and wire and capacitor if necessary and so on so you can get everything together and then build your little portable antenna that you can take out in the field so I'm going to put this up. I'm going to go outside and I'm going to run the wire up over the top of my mast and then uh, hook it up and we'll uh, tune it and then uh, we'll get on the air with it. So here is the feed point of the antenna. Um, I drove a ground rod in and I wanted to drive it in all the way but I kept hitting rocks. Um, the soil here is full of these big rocks. I tried five different spots and I couldn't get the thing down more than about half a meter or one and a half feet. So uh, it's not really acting as much of a ground rod, but I did clip onto it as you can see there with the alligator clips. Um, scanning the antenna with and without the ground rod, the, the scans didn't change hardly at all. So uh, I know it's not acting very good as a ground rod, it's just an anchor point. It's sandy soil, so uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> It's, it makes a good mount point, I guess. Um, here's a wider view, and you can kind of see the ground rod and see how far up it is out of the ground there. Uh, but it worked um, for an anchor point for the feed point. And uh, you can see the, uh, a better view of the uh, uh, ballon there. So the wire runs up over the top of my mast, and then down at the far end, I have a rock that is anchoring the uh, end of the wire. And if we look up to the cord there, you can see the uh, you can see it up over the mast, and it comes down to the feed point. Uh, now I scanned it with the VNA first uh, because I was going to tune it, and um, this is a uh, this is the uh, uh, scan of the 40 meter band before tuning it, and you can see that it's short. Um, I originally started with uh, 65 feet of wire, and uh, uh, that was short, uh, so I had to lengthen it. But before I did, I scanned it um, on the other bands just to get a, an idea of what it's going to look like. And uh, this is the 20 meter scan. It's below 2 to 1, so that's uh, useful. I'm kind of flat, which is a little odd. Uh, let's see, 15 meters before tuning it. Um, again, well below 2 to 1, so it's going to be usable there. Uh, and finally, uh, 10 meters um, before tuning it. And uh, weirdly, it looks long here. Um, the lowest point is below 10 meters. So I do recall that uh, builders of this antenna um, 
we'll put an inductor on it to make it work better somewhere up the, the wire a little ways as a trap to make it work better on 10 meters, uh, which I haven't done. But my primary focus is 40 and 20. So then I went ahead and I tuned it. Um, I ended up lengthening the wire by almost two feet. But um, after doing so, this is the 40 meter scan, and this looks a lot better. Uh, we're right down there at 7.25, which is great for the single sideband portion. But if you look down, uh, down to 7 megahertz, it's below 1.5 to 1 all the way down the band. So it's perfectly usable on 40 meters. Um, 20 meters, uh, again, mostly flat and below 2 to 1. It actually came up just a little bit, I think. Um, but still, it would be somewhat usable. Uh, little, little, getting pretty close to 2 to 1, but you know that's going to be fine for most radios. So it's usable on 20 meters without a tuner. And you could tweak it in um, with a tuner. Uh, I did look at the other bands. Let's see, 15 meters after the tuning. Um, again, it looks a little long uh, for 15 meters. Uh, but it is below 2 to 1 at the bottom end of the band. So um, usable on 15 without a tuner and easily tweakable. Um, 10 meters got a little goofy. Again, it looks like it's uh, long. But as I said, my focus with this antenna is 40 and 20 meters. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, the other thing I was curious about was I, uh, I was measuring it with the VNA at the coax end inside the RV. So there's a length of coax running from the feed point into the RV to where I was connected to it. Now, uh, I was curious to see what it would look like right at the antenna. So I took the VNA out and I hooked it up right there at the feed point, as you can see here. And then I rescanned it on uh, 40 meters. So this is uh, 40 meters with the VNA right at the feed point. And uh, that looks really good. Um, 7 megahertz all the way up to uh, 7.34 or so. It's staying below 1.5 to 1. So that's... That's pretty good. And uh, for comparison, let's look again at the scan at the coax end. And you can see that the bottom end of the band comes up above 1.5 to 1 uh, a bit. So the coax shield is becoming part of the antenna system um, when, you, uh, when you hook the coax up. Uh, and uh, the counterpoise, a little bit of counterpoise wire kind of corrects for that a bit. Uh, but it's not enough of a difference to make me worry about it. I mean, I could uh, basically, with well, this is a long length of coax. This is probably 30 feet of coax going from the feed point up to the connector on the RV and then back down to the desk. Well, maybe 25 feet. Uh, so I would feel confident uh, with the antenna's performance on 40 meters without an antenna tuner with varying short lengths of coax going from the antenna to the radio if I was in the field. Uh, it should work fine. Uh, I did some whisper testing. Um, this is 40 meters during the day, and this is with the Zactec um, beacon, which outputs a quarter of a watt, 250 milliwatts. Uh, so that's 40 meters during, oh, I think it was mid-afternoon. Uh, so that's pretty good um, for a quarter watt. And of course, that depends on propagation, which wasn't that great this week. Uh, here is 20 meters uh, whisper testing, again, with a quarter of a watt. And uh, it got out pretty well. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That's, that's a good pattern. So I think it's going to be good working antenna. Now, I uh, did make a couple of QSOs with it. Well, several, actually. And uh, it seems to compare favorably to the uh, doublet. There is a little bit of an orientation difference. Um, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But first off, here's a video clip of uh, me checking uh, in with one of the net control guys from the early bird net uh, this morning. Well, we'll see. A uh, little bit of QSB going on. You uh, you took a big fade there towards the end, so the band is undulating as it changes. But as long as you can copy me uh, up there on the SDR, I wonder if, uh, before anything gets going here, if you could do a quick test with me. Uh, I want to compare uh, this antenna to my doublet and uh, find out if the uh, if there's much of a difference between the two. Uh, I'm on an end-fed half wave right now, 
It's a, an Elk Pack portable antenna kit that uh, I did a video on. And I want to compare it uh, to the doublet. Uh, uh, could you uh, could you assist me with that? Over. All right, well, give me just a moment here. I'm going to switch to the doublet. Uh, hold on. Okay, there we go. All right, now I'm tuned up on the doublet. Uh, this is uh, still about peaking about 8 watts on the doublet. Uh, is, uh, how's the signal over? Okay, uh, well, I'm sure that uh, part of that is the orientation, because the doublet is oriented east to west, so it's going to be stronger north to south, and the uh, other uh, NFED half wave is more of an inverted V, but it's oriented uh, northwest to southeast, so uh, a little more off the ends of it uh, on the uh, on the NFED half wave. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the difference there, um, because you went down just a bit in reception on the doublet, um, so uh, I don't know where you are, uh, but uh, I think the orientation is making the biggest difference. Over. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Yeah, I'm in uh, Seaport, Washington, uh, just west of Seattle, so uh, I'm kind of uh, west of uh, the Utah SDR. And, uh, and so the Elk Pack portable antenna kit, uh, wound as a half wave and fed, works great. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'll uh, bundle that back up and put it in its pouch and put it with the rest of my portable antenna stuff for use uh, in a quick setup in the field if uh, the need arises. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll put a link in the description below for the uh, uh, Electroludicates website if you want to investigate the uh, kit yourself. I'll also put a link to the previous video I did on assembling the kit, um, which I really did the, the full look at what's available in his products. Hope you found that useful. In other news, uh, I know a lot of you have been waiting for me to put up the big 630-meter uh, uh, resonant antenna experiment, and I've been waiting on a neighbor to move here so that I could use a tree that's on the edge of his campsite. Uh, well, I talked to him this morning. He's not moving. Uh, he's staying here till the area closes uh, due to the uh, lockdowns and other issues going on with the COVID-19 virus um, epidemic that's going on right now. However, uh, I talked to him about what I wanted to do, and he said, no problem. If you want to run a wire over to that tree, go right ahead. So I have permission to put up my big long wire antenna, and uh, that's what I'm doing next. So the next video, we should have a resonant 630 meter antenna up. I'm looking forward to that, and I'm sure a lot of you are too. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.